بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد حدثني جماعة من الشيوخ بإسناد كل إلى سفيان بن عيينة عن عمر بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the Shemini's hadith that those who are merciful they will be shown mercy by the most merciful be merciful and show mercy to those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens he will show you mercy وقال العلماء the ulama they mention ذلك بأن العلم رحمة they said this is because knowledge is mercy نتيجته رحمة في الدنيا وغايته رحمة في الآخرة its result is knowledge or its result is mercy in this world and the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter seeking knowledge is important upon every Muslim man and every Muslim woman as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said إِنَّمَا الْعِنْ بِتَعَلُّمْ that verily knowledge is through is acquired through the act yani through seeking it that knowledge is acquired by way of seeking it وَقَالَ النَّبِيُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ طَلَبُ الْعِنْ فُرِيضُ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim وَقَالَ النَّبِيُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that whoever Allah wants good for, he gives them understanding of the religion. So having understanding of the religion is is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa taala he wants for you good. And in order to have understanding of the religion, or the way in which an individual will have understanding of the religion, that is by way of knowledge, is that they have sought knowledge and acquired knowledge. Knowledge has to be sought. What makes this clear? In addition to the aforementioned ahadith, is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Man salat al-tariqan yatamis wabihi ilma, sahar Allahu lahu tariqan ilal jannah." That whoever, whoever seeks a path by way of it, they intend to seek knowledge. Whoever takes a path by way of it, now two um, bags, yeah, two tea bags. Anyway, uh, whoever seeks a path by way of it. So whoever takes a path by way of it to seek knowledge, then Allah will make easy for them the path to Jannah. Naam. The ulama they point out that what is mentioned here in this hadith is tariqan, a path which shows us that seeking knowledge, there are ways and paths to seek knowledge. Naam. That there is a methodology and there are turuq. There are paths by way in which a person seeks knowledge. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Man salaka, whoever takes transverses upon a path, they take a path seeking knowledge because seeking knowledge requires that we seek it, that we look, that we go after it, that we chase it. So it is incumbent to seek knowledge. Ma'am, it is a must to seek knowledge. The Muslim." should always be striving to learn something new so that they may implement it, so that they may live in accordance to it. Because knowledge without action, it does not benefit. Knowledge without action, it does not benefit. That which benefits is the knowledge that is applied. The knowledge that is applied, that one lives in accordance to it. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he goes on in this tremendous hadith and he says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fala adulla. Should I not point you? Ala adulluka ala abawab al khayr. Shall I not point you to the doors of good? Shall I not point you to the doors of good? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after explaining to Mu'adh that the way to get you to Jannah is by implementing the five pillars of Islam, the way that will remove you from the hellfire, then it is by implementing the five pillars of Islam, those wajibat, those things that are wajib. And then after that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "And shall I not point you to the doors of good?" Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he goes on to mention some aspects that are from the voluntary aspects, but are tremendous aspects that we have to pay very close attention to and strive to take advantage of them. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Asom junna," that fasting is a shield fasting is a shield now and that صدقة, that voluntary charity it extinguishes the sins just as water extinguishes fire that sadaqah the voluntary charity it will extinguish sins just as water extinguishes fire and the prayer of a man in the middle of the night and as we know from the generality of the text Whatever is applicable for the men is applicable for the women. Unless there comes a text which specifies this action for one without the other. So in general, the salah of a, a man or the salah of a woman. Now, the salah of an individual in the middle of the night. The salah of an individual in the middle of the night. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He recited The following verse تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ And that Their sides abandoned the beds And that they abandoned the beds Because they are praying in the night Naam and their sides abandoning the beds and this is due to them praying during the night until in this in this ad can be found in surah sajda in this verse 16 until the statement until the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hatta balagha until he reached the um, statement of Allah ta'ala ya'lamun and that they know naam and that they know and bi idnillahi ta'ala we will come to see in more depth and more detail the the meaning and the impact of these Ayat. Ala kullin. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He outlined for us those deeds that an individual they will benefit from. Those doors of good that an individual they would benefit from if they were to take them. وقال فضيلة الشيخ الشيخ عبد المحسن العباد حفظه الله تعالى 
لما بين صلى الله عليه وسلم he said and and once the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had clarified الفرائض those obligatory affairs التي هي سبب في الدخول الجنة والسلامة من النار those deeds those obligatory deeds that are a cause for an individual to enter or a reason for an individual to enter into Jannah and safety from the fire أرشد صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى جملة من النوافل التي يحصل للمسلم بها زيادة الإيمان وزيادة الثواب وتكفير الذنوب The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he pointed to those actions those voluntary actions that a Muslim by way of them if they were to do them will increase their Iman and will increase their reward and will expiate their sins وَهِيَ الصَّدَقَةَ وَالصِّيَامُ وَالْقِيَامُ لَيْنِ and those actions they are صَدَقَة the voluntary charity وَالصِّيَامُ and here what is intended is the voluntary uh, fasting. وَقِيَامُ layl And prayer in the night. In prayer in the night. This is tremendously important for those who are seeking to do good, for those who are seeking to be righteous, that they adorn themselves with these voluntary acts of obedience unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking to increase their iman seeking to increase their reward seeking to have their sins expiated and wiped away this is very important and this highlights the fact that the deen of al-islam is not a deen of lip service. It's not a deen of individuals just making claims. It's not a deen of individuals just speaking. But rather, it is a deen that necessitates also action. Now, it, ne it necessitates action. We have to act in a manner that is correct. We have to bring forth righteous good deeds. We have to make sure that we are establishing the obligations and in addition to the establishment of the obligations we have to strive to establish those voluntary acts those voluntary acts yeah, of righteousness and obedience because in them there is great benefit the first in which the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned was a soul fasting yeah. and the Prophet وسلم, he said that the fasting that it is a shield now now I want you to reflect on this the fasting is a shield and as we know now fasting is a shield an individual when they are fasting you will find that they are more reserved because they remember the state that they are in that they are in a state of fasting so they're more reserved their speech is going to be more governed their actions are going to be more governed. There may be certain things that they will do when they're not fasting that they're going to be more conscious not to do them while they are fasting. So it is a shield. It is a protection. It is a safety. It is that which will help an individual curb their lusts and desires. It is that that will help an individual govern their tongue. And what they say, it, was, it is that which will have an individual govern their actions and that in which they do. So the Prophet وسلم, he described the fasting as Junna. It's a shield. It's a shield. Well, Junna here al wiqaya. The Junna it is al wiqaya. It is that which is like a shield, a protection. Al wiqaya is something you will take. As a protection. And the fasting then 
It is a shield in this world and in the next. Wahua wiqaya fi dunya song is a shield in this world. Min al wukur fil ma'asi from entering and falling into sin. Now that fasting is a shield in this world because it protects the individual from falling into sin. So if it were to be asked, how is fasting a shield in this world? Because it will protect the individual from falling into sin. It will shield them from falling into sin, from committing sin, as Yani aforementioned. How is it a shield in the hereafter? It's a shield in the hereafter from the fire. Now, so what is the, the delil? What delil? What is the delil that points to this and that points to that? What is what is the proof and the evidence that fasting is a shield from falling into sin in this world? فَعَنْ عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه on the authority of of عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said يا معشر الشباب O assembly of youth O you youth نعم and as mentioned by the ulama this is an address specifically to the youth or this is an, excuse me an address to the youth but it's not that which is specific unto them meaning that also older people enter into this as well but the youth are identified because typically the desires of the youth are more. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "O oh, assembly of youth, من استطاع منكم الباء that whoever from amongst you has the ability to get married, فليتزوج. Whoever from amongst you has the ability, then let them get married. Nam. Whoever from amongst you has the ability, then let them get married. فإنه أحسن للفرج because verily it is better as a protection for your private parts meaning that a person is able to preserve their modesty better when they're married now that a person is able to preserve their modesty better when they are married and this is why we said it is an address to the youth but it's not specific to the youth but it applies to all because the person who is older also it helps them better protect their modesty as well. Marriage helps them better protect their their modesty. Nam. And it helps the individual better lower their gaze. Nam. That the that the marriage it helps the individual better lower their gaze. Nam. So so now before getting into the exception. It is a good that is good that we establish the default rule. The default rule for the one who is plagued and has a fitna as relates to the opposite sex is marriage. So what is the makhraj from the fitna of the opposite sex? Marriage. That's the number one solution. Is you get married. Now the number one solution for the men who are who have a who are trialed by the women, women is their fitna, then the number one solution is marriage. For those women who they are trialed with the fitna of the men, now that's a test for them, then the number one solution is marriage. That's the number one solution. The exception comes in the statement of the Prophet. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِيعَ And whoever does not have the ability Whoever does not have the ability Because in the beginning the Prophet ﷺ He said يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَاءَ فَلْيَتَّزَوْجْ O Assembly of Youth Whoever from amongst you has the ability for marriage Then get married Naam, that's the origin And then the Prophet ﷺ He said Later on in the, in the hadith, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِيعُ And whoever does not have the ability to get married, okay, if you don't have the ability to get married, then what? فَعَلِيهِ 
فعليه بالصوم then is upon him to fast نعم then is upon him to fast طيب I'm bring I'm highlighting that because what a lot of times we lose sight of what is the number one solution and what is the secondary solution we lose sight نعم a person comes to you and they say and a lot of times it's more illustrated in a conversation between the husband and the wife the husband says I'm looking to take on another wife then typically what is the response of the woman well just fast is that the number one solution just fast no you first you have to examine if the ability is there for him to take on another wife if the ability is there then the number one option is to get married again if the ability is not there okay then you as a fallback then you fast now likewise for the youth there are many of the youth who are past their secondary schooling and so on and so forth and they say I want to get married and what do the parents say no just fast finish college and until then just fast you'll be okay is that the number one solution no number one solution is get married get married now you can get married and go to school why not people do it all the time right so the number one solution for the fitna of the men and women is to get married if you don't have the ability then you fast why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said fa innahu lahu wija because verily it is for them that which will decrease their sexual desires fasting it will decrease the individual's desires now so the decreasing of the individual's desires and in that it will help safeguard an individual from falling into fornication then this is a clear illustration that fasting is a shield because it will shield the one who is not married who does not have the means to get married from falling into fornication what fasting fa innahu lahu wija because it is for them that which will um reduce their desires now so that's how it is that's that's the yani, a proof which shows us that it is a shield in this world that it is a shield in this world and in the next now this is a proof of the shield in this world as a far as a a a shield in the next the shaykh mentions wa hiya wiqayatun fil akhirah and it is a shield in the hereafter yani min dukhul an nar from entering into the fire fa qad ja'a fil hadith it comes inside a, of a hadith yani rawahu al bukhari that has been collected by al bukhari that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man sama yawman fi sabilillah ba'ad Allah wajhahu 'ala an nar sab'ina kharifa that whoever fast a day in the way of Allah it will remove their face from the fire a distance of 70 years naam the shaykh he brings the hadith generally some of the ulama they say that this hadith specifically is as relates to the person who is fighting in the way of Allah and he fasts while fighting in the way of Allah then it is for those individuals that they their face will be removed for every day that they fast uh 70 years from the fire naam others from the ulama they say the wording is general so yes it applies to the mujahid that is fighting fi sabilillah that if they fast then their face will be removed from the fire for 70 years but also there is no indication in the hadith that is not applicable to the one who was not fighting in the way of Allah but is whoever fast one day in the way of Allah that Allah will remove their face from the fire from uh, for the distance of 70 years ala kulli hal whether this or whether that what is clear is that fasting will remove individuals faces from the fire 70 years for every day that they fast for every day that they fast naam so that shows us that what that fasting is is a shield is a protection from the from the fire is a protection from the fire wa qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said wa sadaqa tudfi al ma and that uh, excuse me wa sadaqa tudfi al khati'ah kama yudfi al ma an nar 
and that the sadaqa it it um, it extinguishes the sins just as water extinguishes fire that sadaqa it extinguishes sins just as water extinguishes fire now this is something that we shall all pay very very close attention to because the reality is that we want to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the least amount of sins as possible so it has to be in our yani, um, it has to be an extreme concern for us that we are constantly striving to lessen our burden that we're constantly striving to lessen our burden of sins now and that is by making tawbah unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by repenting unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then by doing those righteous good deeds by way in which the sins will be forgiven if we if we do them this is extremely important now from those righteous good deeds is charity giving charity now the shaykh he says inside of it then, then there is a, yani a clear example of sadaqa and nafila which shows the tremendous status of the voluntary charity and that Allah Ta'ala he removes and he erases by way of the voluntary charity sins that sins are erased that they are extinguished the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he brought an example he said just like water extinguishes fire just like water extinguishes fire Naam. And now, and that it extinguishes the sins just like water extinguishes fire. The Sheikh says what is intended by sins here, then it means the minor sins. Now, that typically what we understand is that what is intended by sins here, then is in as relates to the minor sins. The Sheikh says, but also, he said, but also it will extinguish the major sins when it is coupled with repentance from the major sins. So if a person repents from a major sin and then they give charity as well, then what? This is them getting the sins wiped off of them. Right? This is like a double cleansing. Because they're cleansing themselves from the major sin. And, and then their charity, their voluntary charity, will cleanse them from the minor sins. So if a person wants to cleanse themselves from all sins, both major and minor, then they'll do that by tawbah and sadaqah. By tawbah and by sadaqah. And this is important because when we come on the day of judgment and our deeds are weighed, our good deeds and our bad deeds, we want our good deeds to be heavier. What is a way to ensure our good deeds are heavier? By lightening our bad deeds, by getting them erased. Erased by way of repentance, erased by way of charity, that we give charity. Ma'am? So, when a person realizes the importance of this, then they will understand better the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fear the fire, even if it's with a piece of a date meaning give charity with whatever you have even a piece of a date a piece of a date worth of charity will erase get some minor sins erased so you protect yourself from the hellfire by lightening your sins now these things are extremely important because they benefit us as individuals but sadaqah, as we took before, is like what? A zakat. It also benefits the society as a whole because it will benefit those individuals who receive the charity or those, um, those uh, what do you say, those causes that will receive the charity, right? So, for example, 
those individuals, if an individual is in need of money, then that charity, it will benefit the individual. If it is a cause, for example, uh, feeding the poor, buying food for the poor to feed them, or buying clothes, you know, so on and so forth, right? Uh, establishing hospitals, medical clinics, and so on and so forth, so a person may spend and the likes of these, uh, of these things, then those people, those individuals who will benefit from said cause and charity, then they will, they will benefit from the charity. So it benefits the individual who gives it because it gets the, his sins or her sins erased, and they get a good deed, so on and so forth. And it benefits those who receive the charity because now they're benefiting from the monies that were spent. So it is a win-win situation. And this is why the Muslims, when the Muslims enter into a situation, when the Muslims enter into uh, a community, they're supposed to make the community better. When the Muslims enter into a country, they're supposed to make the country better, right? If an individual is opposed to the Muslim, yani, they're supposed to make all individuals around them, their situation better. And a lot of times, uh, somebody may think, well, that may require a lot of effort. We have to do this, we have to do that, we have to extend, you know, extend ourselves in so many different ways. When the reality of it is, is that all a Muslim has to do is establish what they are supposed to establish. To establish the obligations. And to try their best to establish as much as they can from the voluntary actions. That's all they have to do. And by doing that, the society will benefit and the individual will benefit. They will make any situation they enter into better. If they just do what? If they just do what they're supposed to do in the first place. If they just do what they're supposed to do in the first place. Now, and I want you to think about this. Likewise... If they do what they're supposed to do in the first place, when they come into a situation, they won't make it worse. They won't be a detriment to their communities. Because the Prophet said, said, There is no harm, no reciprocation of harm. So this means that the Muslim doesn't do anything that is directly harmful, and they don't do anything that will cause harm by proxy. Now, so their harm is not direct or indirect. So once they establish this, then this would be a benefit for what? For that society. Right? They're not going to cause harm. But if anything, they're going to what? Make it better. If anything, they're going to make it better. Do you see the benefit in just doing what we're supposed to do? So this is why it is vital that the Muslims, that we establish that which we are supposed to do uh, because it will enrich our lives and the lives of those around us. The Sheikh, he goes on, and he goes on to mention, he says, وَتَشْبِيهُ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم إِطْفَاءُ الصَّدَقَةَ لِلْخَطَايَ بِإِطْفَاءِ الْمَاءِ And now, يَدُلُّ عَلَى زَوَالِ الْخَطَايَ كُلِّهَا He said, and the example that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he gave by saying that the sadaqah, it extinguishes the sins just like the water extinguishes fire points us to the fact that sadaqah removes the sin in totality it erases the sin not that it lessens the sin but that it erases the sin naam fa inna mushahada fi al ma idha waqa al nar because from that which is seen in witness is that water, when it lands upon fire, it will remove the fire until the fire no longer is present. It will remove it would hit the fire and remove the fire until the fire is totally extinguished and this is sadaqah likewise it will hit the sin and it will erase the sin and extinguish the sin until the sin no longer is present so sadaqah is extremely important now so as muslims every day we should strive to give sadaqah what we are able to give from sadaqah and, the, and many types 
of sadaqah. Now, as we went over before, there are many types of sadaqah. Calling to good, forbidding evil is sadaqah. Now, helping a Muslim is sadaqah. Now, smiling in the face of your brother is sadaqah. So on and so forth. There's so many ways to give charity that we have to be charitable upon ourselves every single day. We have to make sure we're giving charity. Now, and if Allah Ta'ala has blessed us financially with financial means, then we have to strive to make sure that we are spending in the way of Allah as much as we possibly can. And then the Shaykh goes on to mention um, the last of the doors of good that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned here in this particular hadith. But inshallah ta'ala, we want to save that discussion until the next class because uh, we want to be able to take our time as, as relates to it. Uh, so as to not to yani, uh, prolong this class and rush through that particular section, we will save this section until next time. فنكتفي بهذا القدر صلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا